Yeah, so we're launching aircraft off of an aircraft carrier. Now, the newest technology is called an EMOL, which is an electromagnetic aircraft launch system. It uses magnets and an induction motor to carry the aircraft down the aircraft carrier deck and launch it. But the, uh, there's a little controversy, because apparently the new technology, some people don't like it, versus the old or existing technology, which is steam. Steam or electric, ready? Steam. And apparently even the President of the United States is weighing in on this. They're saying, bring back the steam, which we're always gonna say bring back the steam, right? We did an episode a couple of years ago on the steam catapult launch system. So have a watch, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Hey, thanks to our men and women in the uh, United States Navy that keep us safe on these aircraft carriers. See you next time. Now, the runway for the aircraft carrier is about 300 feet, give or take. These planes are used to having about 2,000 plus feet to take off, so this calls for a lot of power, which is where the steam comes in. Now, the history of this is before World War II, they were launching planes off of, uh, off of boats in the ocean, but they were doing it with pulleys, um, gunpowder, jet fuel, springs, all sorts of things. So they needed a powerful, safer means than jet fuel of launching planes, and the steam system that was already on the ship came into play. So here's what's going on. Now, above deck, you've got obviously the plane, and you have the shuttle. The shuttle is what gets that little cleat thing you see on the deck, the white thing here that gets propelled down the uh, runway. Well, that has a tow bar, and the tow bar hooks to the plane. It also has a holdback bar, which keeps the plane from taking off because when the catapult officer, it's the little guy sitting in this uh, canopy right here, he's the one that makes the launch decision. He's calculating how much steam I need based on which plane I'm launching, how much it's carrying the weight of it, and all sorts of good stuff. Well, that holdback bar is only designed to hold the thrusters. When the catapult officer says go, the guy in the plane goes full thruster, and that plane is just amped and ready to go, and then the catapult officer is gonna open up a steam valve. Now, below deck, there are two long cylinders that run alongside that seam that you see on top of the aircraft carrier. They run the entire length of the runway, about 300 feet. And in those cylinders are two pistons. And what happens is when the catapult officer tells the pilot to go full throttle, and he goes full throttle, that holdback bar is holding it, catapult officer is gonna open up a valve that's gonna flood uh, those cylinders with high pressure steam, and it pushes the pistons at a high rate of speed all the way down the runway. Keep in mind, the pistons are connected to the shuttle, which is connected to the plane through the tow bar, and that's what sends the plane down the runway. Now, another interesting note that I found is there's basically a mechanical zipper that's down the middle of those two cylinders. That's what keeps all the steam from leaking out, but as you can see from the video, there's still steam that kind of leaks out. That's what makes that iconic look after the plane takes off or all the steam's venting out. So. Uh, so in review, we've got uh, steam cylinders, we've got steam pistons, you've got a very fast acting steam valve, and a lot of pressure and power generated to launch a plane that size off into the air. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I think these things are really cool to find out what goes behind the scenes. So I hope you enjoy the story behind the story like I do. So join me next week, we'll have another episode. Find us on social media, because we're everywhere. I'll see you next Friday on Steam Culture.